when the time comes very shortly. And the other clip, we're going to take this off there. Well, I, I, my favourite place for the clip is there. Okay. If we want to gain access underneath, these little clips are quite clever because we can press the clip down and we can open this up and we can gain access underneath quite simply by, by pushing this little tab down. If ever you need any more of these clips, we've got plenty of them, so we can always send more if you, if you need. Any spares, here, we've got plenty of them. Now the last thing we want to check before turning on is actually making sure that the, that the carriage can go all the way to the left. In this case, it's about spot on. But let's say, let's move it let's move it back a bit. See how this tubing can actually, we can actually slide the tubing up. So if your tubing was a bit tight like that, we can't quite move it up. You'd simply ease that a little bit, ease that up a little bit until that's reasonably tight. And then we want it nice and parallel there. That's about the right arrangement there so it can move up to the right and it can move all the way to the left without causing problems. Now you may find sometimes these little tubes they get a little bit of a of a kink in them because it's got a bit of a memory of where where the tubing was in the in, in the bin. Don't panic too much about that usually overnight with the ink in it it takes up this nice curl uh, this this nice curl. What we now have to do is to put the the bit of technology here, this nice bit of uh, 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 tubing, over the side here. There's a little slot, and you can put this tubing into this slot. There's a little there's a little uh, um, bar at, at the back here, at the back of the slot, and the intention is to move the bar towards the back of the printer with this little bit of tubing, so that the printer thinks that the lid is on all the time. So this is a bit of bit of high technology but it works like a dream, nice and reliable and it tells the printer that the, the lid is down effectively and the last little bits we're looking for are these little bumpers so we put one bumper on this side about there and the other one on this side about there where we can actually bring it down and we can see that the lid doesn't close all the way down. Now we've got the, the uh, We've got to put the mains back in the printer. It's got a green light on. And we're now waiting for the printer to communicate with the, uh, with the, uh, with the cartridges. Just waiting for it to do its thing. It should, it should uh, uh, start to whir. And it goes up towards the left. There it goes. Comes back down. Goes up and down. It, ta it gets its register. Um, and we're looking for uh, uh, any any uh, resets that need that, that, that need being done. So here we've got all of the lights now that have come on. Um, all we now need to do is press the ink change button. Now the way to reset these cartridges is in exactly the same way as for the standard Epson cartridges. So when an Epson cartridge indicates that it needs to be changed, we take out the cartridge and we put a new cartridge in its place. And the action of putting a new cartridge in, we interrupt the circuit and we put the circuit back in and it resets the particular, the particular uh, uh, cartridge. Now in this case, we have to spend another 10 or 12 pounds on an, another cartridge. But in the case of the license continuous ink system it's a lot less painful so in this case all we need to do for the first time we just simply undo these cartridges lift them up we lift them all up like this they'll all lift up and it's we just need to break the circuit momentarily we don't have to we don't have to be too too uh, uh, so we've broken the circuit we've pressed them all down again now and they're all nicely clipped down. We make sure our, our matte blacking is nicely just sat there. It, it sits of its own accord there. We used to have a, like a, a Velcro to hold it down, but we found in, pro, in, 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 uh, in use it actually doesn't need it in the old system, so we don't bother any longer. But we now press that button, and now you'll find that the printer 
responds to the responds to the uh, to the cartridges. I can tell that the that it's uh, uh, that it's talking to the 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 cartridges because it's starting to it's starting to, to whir and it's moving up and down and yes all the cut all that that's it all the lights have now extinguished so that it goes up to the end there it goes all the way down you can see all those lights now have extinguished I try to bring the light de that down a little bit so you can actually see that all the lights have extinguished you can now run the printer either with the lid down initially to be honest I like to run the printer uh, uh, upwards so that I can actually see uh, what's going on now all I now need to do is get myself a perfect nozzle check um, usually I like to leave my system for about 20 minutes or so to allow the inks to settle once the inks have settled, because with all this pumping, the inks have the consistency of, let's say, lemonade, really. You've got a mixture of, of ink and bubbles, and it can be difficult to achieve a perfect nozzle check. So our advice is to leave the printer for about 20 minutes or half an hour, let's say, just allow the inks to settle in there. Then we come back to the printer, put our paper in the machine, and get ourselves a perfect nozzle check. If you don't get a perfect nozzle check within two nozzle checks or, and cleans after, a, after leaving the printer for, uh, as I say, 20, 20 or 30 minutes, uh, really then you need to let us know because we fully expect to achieve a perfect nozzle check within two, two nozzle checks and cleans. Now, if any of this is not clear for you, please contact me. Uh, you may be going through the, the routine of installing it yourself, or you may be watching this video uh, thinking that you might uh, go for one of these systems and you need a few questions answered. But you can contact me at uh, john at marrot.com. That's my personal email address, and it, came, it comes straight up to, onto my desk. So that's John, J-O-H-N, at Merit.com. And we see the 2880 now ready to, ready to run uh, reliably for years and years to come. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.